Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. I recently did a video when I compared different uh, 2 meter uh, mobile or portable antennas and came up with a surprising result that this Diamond RH770 actually outperformed uh, a 3 quarter wave, uh, a J-pole type antenna. Um, and since then, lots of people have been asking me um, about the, the fake ones, the Chinese ones that are that are widely available. There's also been a few folk out there that have actually went out and bought the diamond ones. So, here we have a Chinese copy of an RH770 and the real RH770. So, it's a bit cold out here, it's about minus 8 degrees today. Let's go inside, get a bit warm and we'll test these out. First thing I'm going to do is actually compare the uh, physical dimensions and attributes of these two antenna. And after that, I'm going to get the Nano VNA out and we'll give them a, a try and um, see if we can get some measurements from them. And then ultimately, we need to get these two on the air and see which one works over the greatest distance and that could be quite interesting. Uh, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. So you have to watch on to find out. Both of these antenna have got BNC connectors on them um, and you can see if I hold them side by side that the Chinese copy is very slightly taller than the Diamond RH770. This one is actually called a Tuardio RH770 so it's Tango Whiskey Alpha Yankee Radio Delta India Oscar and it cost about £14 off of Amazon, whereas I know this one is more than £40 um, from any of the radio dealers in the UK. Now for the weight. This is the Chinese one. 72 grams. And the diamond antenna. Good bit heavier at 93 grams. When extended, both these antenna have 10 sections and they're pretty much identical in length. Right, I ran out of daylight yesterday. Uh, so, day two. What I've got here is a Nano VNA. It really does simulate a handheld radio, which tends to have a plastic body. Um, the earth is the, the chassis of the radio, and also you, through capacitive effects. But what I've done, just to make sure I'm doing a proper test and to be consistent, I've made a a half wave, so a one meter long counterpoise from a bit of wire and it's just wrapped around the, the earth connection of this SMA. So first of all, we've got the Diamond RH770 and I've done a sweep of the two meter band and it's actually got a really flat SWR from 144 right through to 147 megahertz. And I would say the average is about 1.25 to one, which is really good. Removing the uh, counterpoise actually brings it down to 1.11 to 1, so there you go. Now on to the, uh, the Chinese one. Well, it doesn't actually like the counterpoise. The SWR's coming up as uh, 2 to 1. And with the counterpoise removed, the SWR is 1.7 to 1. So there's quite a difference between the diamond and the Chinese copy. Okay, we'll do 70 centimetres now. With the diamond antenna on, 70 centimetre band, the SWR is between 1 and 1.5 to 1 across the band. This Chinese antenna has given me an SWR of 2.4 to 1 across the 70 centimetre band. So it's not usable. Um, so that's a real concern and a, a surprise really. Okay, we're up near the left ski centre and um, I'm going to try and shout 
my friend Hibby, who's in Aberdeen. It's about 40 odd miles away. MM0 RFN, Mike Mike 0, Romeo Foxtrot November, Mike Mike 0, Echo Foxtrot India. MM0 EFI, MM0 RFN. Good afternoon, Fraser. You're coming through a nice, uh, oh, I would say four or five by three. The signal's gone up since we last spoke. about five and five to me which is an improvement on the uh, uh, the mobile set in the Land Rover fantastic over yeah I'm quite impressed with that um, especially if you're doing five watts into me I'm doing 50 out and it doesn't sound like there's too much of a difference in our signal if I'm coming through five by five back to you no that's absolutely brilliant okay can you uh, hold on a minute and I'll put this Chinese whip on and see how we do with that over MM0 RFN Yep, MM0 RFN returning. On uh, on this one, it looks like you are S2. The meter on the radio here is flicking between two and three, but there's definitely more audible hiss. The, uh, the readability or the audibility of the signal has gone down somewhat. Back to you. Uh, I would say the same. Uh, your signal to me is more broken. It's about an S2, but it's probably a four, a three to four in terms of readability, over. Yeah, no problem at all. Thanks for helping with that. It's been a really interesting uh, a test, over. Yeah, it has been. I'm sure we'll find other antennas to test in the near future. Well, I think that was pretty conclusive. We can definitely say that the, uh, the diamond antenna is better on the air on two meters. Right, back home, let's get this summed up. Right then. Which one do you buy? Do you buy the diamond um, antenna or do you buy this one that's potentially a, you know, a third to a quarter of the price? The Chinese one's lighter, which could be good for the radio, but less good for um, robustness. The pretty much identical performance on two meters, but on 70 centimeters, this one doesn't do it. Uh, the diamond's the only one to do the job. Then the other thing you have to think about is you know, if Diamond have put the research and development into this antenna, which is, you know, cost a bit of money, um, is it worth paying more to them? Because they've, they've come up with the idea and someone else has just come and ripped it off. The choice is yours. The one thing I would say with these antennas, they work really well um, outdoors, as you've seen in my, my previous video. They are quite fragile though, so when you're um, extending it, you know, do it first section first from the bottom and then work your way out and when you're collapsing it back always work with the thicker sections first um, if you do that you're going to snap it okay hope you enjoyed that one it'd be interesting to uh, find out what your thoughts are on uh, on these antenna which one would you buy 73